The American Red Cross has already gotten a charge out of this morning's guest. You will, too, once you meet him. Coming up next on Carolina People. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're Garden City Furniture on Highway 17 Business in Garden City. We're focused on the Heroes Campaign for the American Red Cross. And we're visiting with its chairman, Bill McCowan. Good morning, Bill. Good morning, Greg. How you doing? Thank you so much for coming in. Well, thank you for inviting us. What about this Garden City Furniture? I know. It's a beautiful place. I see a lot of nice stuff here. The place is amazing. Have you ever been in here before? Yes, I have. Actually, I have um, uh, several rental properties in Surfside, and I come here actually quite often and and purchase uh, (laughs) furniture. I'm sure Diane doesn't mind that. That's great. Yeah. This is a beautiful facility. Of course, what a great month. Uh, it has kicked off strong. The the, uh, the Heroes campaign kicked off. I think March is, is it American Red Cross Month? That's correct. Uh, March is American Red Cross Month, and it is also the um, a month that we kick off our Heroes campaign, which is our main fundraising campaign for our chapter. Right, right. This is the coastal South Carolina uh, chapter. Right, which Ori. includes Horry County. Williamsburg County and Georgetown County. Golly, three gigantic counties geographically. Yeah. Yeah. The need must be very strong. Oh, it is. And we were also very fortunate that Jack Devine Jr. with the Devine Food Group actually kicked us off by a $5,000 donation. Oh, come on. Oh, yes. Jack stepped up to the plate. And that uh, is fantastic. Yes, yes. What's the goal for, and of course we'll talk more about this later, sure. but you all have a, some pretty strong goals for the month of March. Well, last year our uh, chairman, uh, Martha Hunt, actually raised $80,000. So as a competitive situation, so that's right, we want to try to raise 100000 this year. Get down. So. Okay, so Monday the 12th, today's the 12th, and mm-hmm. you've got, uh, I guess, another three, three and a half weeks to really make it happen. That's correct, and we feel very confident that we'll get there. That's great. That's great. How about yourself, Bill? Are you originally from the area? Well, I'm actually from the upstate. I'm from Greenville, South Carolina. You grew up in Greenville? That's correct. Uh Huh. What got you down here? Well, actually, I was very fortunate. Um, uh, I actually had a patent on an item um, that uh, I sold my company and was able to move down to the beaches, which is everybody's dream if you live inland, actually. (laughs) And I came down here in the late 90s and um, just loved the area and and, um, made it my permanent home. Wow, and you said you had a patent on a product uh, which enabled you to grow a company and then even sell that company. That's correct. I, I um, developed an item called a 3-in-1 uh, battery charger. It's a self-contained um, battery source, uh, which you can jump, um, jump start your vehicles, boats, um, other type of 12-volt systems. Wow, that's exciting. How did you uh, go about developing a product like that, Bill? Well, actually, um, I was a pilot with Beatrice Foods, and we would go overseas a lot, and I became friends with a um, buyer for Napa Auto Parts, and um, we became very good friends, as we are still uh, good friends. Um, we were talking one night, and he had said, uh, told me um, that he had observed a um, individual carrying a regular car battery with two jumper cables welded to it and was jumping over off a, um, a vehicle. And he said to, to me, he said, could you ima- ever imagine if the technology ever got to the point where they could make batteries lightweight, it would eliminate jumper cables. And it came back to me as I remember when I was with Beatrice Foods that the um, computers was, uh, they had an IBM Baby 36. I don't know if you remember that, but no. an IBM Baby 36 is probably lar- as large as one of these couches back there. <laughs> and now we have these laptops oh, yeah. that are just as powerful. Right. So I went ahead and applied for the um, utility patent on that. And um, sure enough, several years later, I had received a call from somebody that, that apparently they had developed that technology and wanted to buy my rights to it. So wow. I knew it. And then we put the program together. And it's, we actually had it in every retail. Well, it's still in every retailer in the country, from all the clubs, uh, Sam's, Costco, BJ's, to is um, that right? Uh, AutoZone, Pep Boys, um, uh, Napa. Uh, How exciting! Up. Speaking of Napa, have you kept up with the guy who had oh, talked yes. to you about that? Oh, or, yeah. and, and did he ever get in business with you, or is he? Uh, did you all communicate? I mean, you know, with him talking to you about that and uh, going. I mean, you know, just the thought of some an idea coming up. Actually, he was a big part of it. He, since being over there, and he actually speaks um, several dialects of Chinese, he was one that actually sourced the components for me um, mm-hmm. without me knowing the, 
the, the territory over there. Right. He actually sourced the components as far as the cables, the the wires, the uh, motors, the um, battery itself, the casings, and actually put the whole program together for me. How exciting, Bill. That is fascinating. You know, when you go through those steps to think about, and I know as I was looking at uh, a little piece uh, reading about, reading a little bit about UNC, and there was a great quote tying into American Enterprise, that mm -hmm. idea of seeing a need. Mm -hmm. and finding a way to fill it and getting the right people together to make that happen. It sounds like you, you, and, you and he had discussed that need and uh, you found a way to make it happen. Oh, that's great. And you're right. We have the greatest workers in this country. I'm telling you right now, um, as far as quality and competitiveness, this is where it's at. It's in the, in the, in the USA. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, of course, th that aspect of having been a pilot, uh, do you mm -hmm. still fly? Yes, I do. I, have, I actually have a, a light plane, air, a single engine airplane that I keep out at uh, Myrtle Beach International. Mm-hmm. So you're able to get up on a regular basis? Oh, yeah, definitely. Travel, I actually, actually fly about once a week. Is that right? Yeah. Golly, do you still have business in the upstate or ties to the Yes, upstate? I do. I, have, I actually own, um, uh, I'm actually doing a development up there in uh, Greenville right now and own several um, parcels of land up there. Uh-huh, uh-huh. That's exciting. What prompted your interest in the American Red Cross, Bill? Um, I'll be honest with you. I've been very blessed um, uh, in my business, in my life, and I feel that the community has given me a lot, and I feel it's time for me to give back. I'm actually involved in several things. As you know, I'm a town council member right. for Surfside. Surfside Beach, right up the street. Yeah, yeah. and I'm uh, the chairman of the Horry County Airport Advisory Board. And I tell you, the American Red Cross is probably the least self-serving organization I've ever been involved with. Um, this is a great chapter here. Um, when I, I found out what they were involved in, they're in, involved with, um, most people think of the Red Cross as um, only dealing with uh, disasters. Right. And when it comes right down to it, on a day-to-day -day functions, they deal with um, fires, and they, they're a strong link between service families and their, I mean, um, service people overseas and the families in the Absolutely, upstate. Absolutely, yes. And also, um, they, they provide a great service of um, uh, Red, uh, Red Cross training, you know, uh, um, emergency training features along the water here, waterway oh, yeah. deals. Um, so when I found out about that, I just I felt I was asked by someone if I would get involved. And plus, being in the position I'm in, I know a lot of community leaders sure. and I know a lot of business leaders. And so I felt I could use that influence to get them to, you know, come off the hip and uh, donate mm -hmm. and get involved at this. Uh, and you're seeing that already. You talked oh, about yes. Jack Devine from De Devine, Jr. from Divine Dining Group and, and them helping to kick off the campaign with $5,000. That's tremendous. But you're seeing some uh, business oh, yes. and community leaders. Oh, yeah. And, and uh, to give an example, even uh, Scott Joy from uh, uh, Joy Lockler and Powers Law Firm, right. he's uh, donated $1,000 and has challenged all the other law firms to... Um, match or, or beat his um, his contribution. And uh, even uh, Senator Cleary, Ray Cleary, uh, right. which we know is a great uh, community leader and also a business sure, leader. Great business uh, Ray's involved in this. Ray has um, offered to uh, give us a contribution. And not only that, I, I think they're having their jars at their dentist's office, you know, for the donations. Yes. And um, Harry Pavlak has stepped up to the plate. So it's Get just down. it's yeah. on and on and on. And it's just like everybody I've called is very receptive because the American Red Cross, as you know, is, is has such a, um, a great background and they're a credible um, mm -hmm. organization. Mm -hmm. And we all know they get no governmental f funding. Is it's, that right? It's all private funding sources. Well, they were founded by the government. That's true. That's correct. Oh, they were founded by the government. They don't get any government support. No government support. That's correct. Son of a gun. That's fascinating. And I bet a lot of people think they do get government support since they were founded by the government. Um, I think another thing that we have to keep in, in perspective is in, in this particular um, fundraising campaign that we're trying to uh, accomplish here, um, as we all know, the catastrophe that happened with Katrina down in the New Orleans area in the panhandle right, there. Right. The American Red Cross has been, I'm sure their funds from the national level has been depleted. Oh, yeah. And um, this is a way for us to give back because, you know, we live along the coast here, too. And mm -hmm. can you imagine if we were ever hit by a major hurricane here? Um, we don't think of it until it happens, but when it does happen, you know, the people like the American Red Cross and those type of organizations are the ones that actually will step in and help us. Oh, yeah, Bill. If a viewer needs to get off to work now or get family off to school, what is the best number to reach? Is it that 477? Yeah, it's 470020. Again, it's 477. 0020. Okay. Or they also can go on the internet and find us at www.coastalsc.com. 
www.coastalscarc.org. Okay, great. www.coastalscarc for American Red Cross .org. And That's it's right. got tremendous information, not only about, you know, for our viewers in the PD in southeastern North Carolina, it has links to other Red Cross chapters, which is wonderful in their areas, but particularly down here, when you think of counties as large as O'Ree, the largest in the state, Georgetown, the fourth largest, and Williamsburg, which is probably right up there, third or fourth largest geographically, this is a uh -huh. giant territory to cover, Bill. And one other thing, too, that I want to make it a point. All the monies that we receive on this Heroes Campaign fundraising event actually stays in the local communities. It actually exactly. stays in Ori, Georgetown, and Williamsburg. So you can be confident that the money that you donate will stay and help your uh, neighbors and actually the community itself. That's tremendous, and there really is that need. I remember Angela Nicholas was with us. We were at uh, Stevens Carpets, golly, a couple of months ago, and hearing her talk about how I think there's a budget, and I'm sure you can uh -huh. highlight these as well, a budget just for fires over the course of the fiscal year, which I think ends June 30. And then what has happened to that, uh, to that budget? That's correct. In fact, I'm glad that you brought that up. Um, last year, in the 12 months of their fiscal year, um, they spent about approximately $75,000 on um, fire-related. Um, Just fire-related. That's correct, by, you know, uh, providing housing, uh, food, and clothing for individuals in their time of need. Mm -hmm. This year alone, the first eight months of this this next cycle, they've already spent over $76,000. No. Wow. So, um, and people don't realize that. I mean, when a family, a local family here in the community has uh, uh, this catastrophe, they come home and, and you think about it, the, the, all their personal properties burned up. Uh, they have nowhere to stay and there is no, you know, food. The, the American Red Cross actually steps up mm -hmm. and, and helps them. So mm -hmm. it's really important for all our uh, community leaders and our um, uh, business leaders to get involved with this. I mean, this is a great opportunity for you to be heard and become a hero. Mm. Is there a threshold, Bill, for the folks that are stepping up to the plate to be involved, or can everyone be involved in this campaign, knowing that mm -hmm. every dollar stays right here? Is it, is, I, I think I saw there's a pretty sizable cutoff to be a hero of financially, but can everyone be involved? Everybody can be involved. Um, you're right. We, we consider the hero campaign starts at $1,000 and above, but there's a lot of ways to achieve this. So, uh, let me give you some examples. Yeah, please. We have a local church here last year that got together and had a dinner, and they actually generated $3,000, so that was one way. We have lo a lot of the local schools get together and uh, generate money and um, get to that $1,000 threshold. Right, right. And we have El Cerro Grande Restaurant, which oh, yeah. on, on March, March 24th, 24th yes, um, they're going to give 15% of their proceeds, which is great. He is just a generous individual, and um, he's been great to the American Red Cross, and we really appreciate right. um, him being on board. I'll tell you another one that uh, has been good to us is uh, Nelson Jackson with the Jackson right. families, so right. Ocean Lakes, uh, Presswick. Uh, oh, yeah. Nelson's been involved in the American Red Cross, and um, we just are really so blessed to have so many uh, great community leaders that are getting involved in us and getting active. I think I saw about 48 hours ago on Saturday, this past Saturday, from 8 to 10, that Applebee's stepped up with that slapjack piece, which yeah. was very exciting, and they yeah. had real success uh, success out there. When you think about events like that, where folks are finding a way, you, you said at El Cerro Grande, I think that uh -huh. day, was it 15% of their proceeds or some That's substantial, correct. 15%, yeah. right, is some 15%. substantial uh, a number of their uh, of uh -huh. their take that day uh -huh. is going to be given right back. So there is a way if folks want to go out to El Cerro Grande on uh, that Saturday, March uh -huh. 24th, and be there, knowing that 15% uh, of whatever they eat or drink that night. And plus, dead, you know right? you're going to get a good meal. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. The, the food there is great. Right, and I think right. he has 15 locations, I think, that's he really? in the area. Yeah, Son so. of a gun. 